Today, I'm going to be making my favorite player on every NBA team a 99 overall. Starting off with the Philadelphia 76ers, we're going to make Mac McClung a 99. And I feel like I've seen this in the comments quite a bit. I've seen people wanting me to add all the Hall of Fame badges to these guys as well. So I'll be doing that for the players in this video, making them even crazier. I think that we'll see some guys put up crazy numbers. For the Milwaukee Bucks, we're going to upgrade Marjan Bochamp. Really like his story of how he made it to the league so we're gonna upgrade him the bucks are a team that i feel like never does that well in the simulation so we'll see if that can change today for the Chicago Bulls, it's Andre Drummond. Man, I really like Andre Drummond. He grabs rebounds. I feel like if he played in a different era, he'd probably go absolutely crazy. Hey, if, if he was in the 90s, they'd basically be talking about him with the all-time great big man. <laughs> oh, man. Man, I can already see the comments. But we're going to go ahead and upgrade Donovan Mitchell. Donovan Mitchell is my favorite player on the Cavs. He gets a lot of buckets. He's really clutch. I love watching players who can take over in the crunch time and Donovan Mitchell in the crunch time kind of sounded like an old head there but in crunch time I love seeing guys who can get big buckets and Donovan Mitchell can do that honestly I really do not like the Celtics team it's nothing against the Boston Celtics if you're a fan of the team but I just hate how they dominate every 2k simulation ultimately I decided Malcolm Brogdon was my favorite player on their team because he accepted a bench role with the team and it seems like he's doing well so yeah Russell Westbrook he's gonna be dunking on people and rocking the baby man MVP Russ was special. I, I don't want to hear all the Russell Westbrook disrespect. He's him. Steven Adams is going to be going up. A former Russell Westbrook teammate. Don't know how you can't like him. Seems like he's a really nice guy. He's got big muscles and stuff. The Atlanta Hawks. We're going to be upgrading John Collins. He's always in trade rumors. We're going to put some respect on his name. Make him a 99. I feel like I've liked him more just because the Hawks are always disrespecting him by having him in trade rumors. He's a solid player, man. And for the Miami Heat, I was talking about how I like guys who can take over in crunch time and Jimmy Butler does exactly that that's Hemi Butler man 99 overall 65 Hall of Fame badges for the Charlotte Hornets, we've got Dennis Smith Jr. Dennis Smith Jr. has ridiculous athleticism, and it seemed like he had a ton of potential coming into the league, but at least we've seen him be able to be back on a roster with the Charlotte Hornets this season. For the Utah Jazz, Laurie Markkinen. Laurie Markkinen has been really good this season. It's cool to see. I like what the Jazz have done with their rebuild, and I feel like the Donovan Mitchell and Rudy Gobert trays worked out pretty well for them, especially that Rudy Gobert trade. But getting Laurie Markkinen back in that trade with the Cavs where you traded away Donovan Mitchell, that was really good if you're the Utah Jazz. For the Sacramento Kings, I'm upgrading Malik Monk. Malik Monk, when he was with the Lakers, I really liked to watch him. He had a lot of electric moments. He had some nice dunks, I think. He made some three-pointers and stuff. So yeah, there you go, Malik Monk. For the New York Knicks, the Knicks are an interesting team this year. They played really well. I'm interested to see how that transfers to the playoffs. Not trying to call y'all playoff frauds, but I, I'm interested to see how that goes because you did end up losing to the Atlanta Hawks in the last time they were in the playoffs, right? So it's going to be interesting to see if they've improved from that and if they can make some noise. I did end up upgrading Derrick Rose, though. For the Lakers, unfortunately, if you're a Lakers fan, this team isn't going to be getting much better. But, I mean, who can blame me? I, I like LeBron James. That's kind of like, you know, most NBA fans like LeBron. Or a lot of people actually hate on LeBron. But I, I don't know. As I've grown up, you know, I, I feel like maturing is realizing that LeBron James regardless of whatever man or whatever you think oh he joined the big three heat I don't care about all that because listen LeBron James has been in this league for 20 years and played such high level basketball he's doing things that are unprecedented and if you're not tuning in or at least watching some highlights or something and you're an NBA fan I feel like you're missing out Anyways, let's go ahead and let's talk about Cam Thomas. Oh, man, I feel like he should get some more opportunities in Brooklyn. He had three 40-point games in a row, so now he'll be able to get lots of more 40-point games at a 99 with all those badges. For the Denver Nuggets, Ish Smith, the ultimate NBA journeyman. He's been on a ton of teams, and why not give him a chance to get some shine with the Denver Nuggets being the best player on the team, and he's got a nice player to play alongside of, and that's Nikola Jokic. He'll be able to set up some plays for him. You 
know Jokic. He makes passes and stuff for the Indiana Pacers. We're going to upgrade Benedict Matherin. Really like his attitude coming out of the draft. I know it's crazy to say, oh, LeBron's going to have to prove that he's better or whatever. But, I mean, I don't know. It was cool to see the confidence. And he has had a really good rookie season. For the New Orleans Pelicans, Jose Alvarado, really good defender. He plays with a lot of energy. He's only six feet tall, and it's really nice to see a guy who's smaller give so much effort on the defensive end. For the Pistons, James Wiseman. I feel like he's a guy who's hard not to root for. He's had a tough time when he was with the Warriors. He was a second pick. It was a weird situation to be thrown into as a second pick. But now he's got a new opportunity in Detroit, and he's had some good games with them. For the Toronto Raptors, I ended up upgrading OG Ananobi. He's a great two-way player. He can shoot threes. He can play defense. That's something that a lot of teams want to have, and OG Ananobi is one of the best players in that role. So we're going to go ahead and upgrade him to a 99 overall and give him all those badges. For the Houston Rockets, I was scrolling down the list trying to figure out who to upgrade, and then I stumbled upon Boban Marjanovic. Oh man, he's 7'4", seems like a really nice guy. I've seen him in some commercials with Tobias Harris, and they were eating goldfish and stuff, so yeah, went ahead and upgraded him. For the San Antonio Spurs, I wasn't really sure. I was kind of baffled by this list of players, wasn't really sure who to pick, but ultimately, I decided on Devontae Graham. I think he went off in his first game with the Spurs after getting traded to them from the Pelicans, and he made a bunch of threes, so that that was cool. So we're going to upgrade him, and yeah, we'll pretty much move on. I don't really know what else to say about the San Antonio Spurs. Hopefully, I'll get Wembenyama, the Phoenix Suns. I didn't know who to pick. Personally, I'm a bit of a Phoenix Suns hater, and I, I like Kevin Durant because he makes mid-ranges, and he's seven feet tall, and his bag is ridiculous, but ultimately, I decided on DeAndre Ayton because he didn't want to be there, and I could understand why. But now y'all got Kevin Durant, so hopefully he'll like being in Phoenix a little bit more. All right, for the Oklahoma City Thunder, I was going to upgrade one of their lower overall players, but ultimately I decided on Shea Gildas Alexander. I know it's kind of a cop out to pick the star player on the team, but I didn't do it too much in this video. And Shea Gildas Alexander is really cool. He plays defense, he has a weird jump shot, and uh, yeah, he still scores a lot, so that's kind of cool. Oh my gosh, the voice cracks wild. Kyle Anderson, he plays at approximately 0.4 miles per hour, but he still gets buckets, and that, that's really cool, especially for people who don't have a lot of athleticism. I'm obviously not talking about myself. Me personally, I'm jumping out the gym. I'll dunk on LeBron. I'll dunk on your favorite athlete. If you drive a car, I, I can outrun it on my feet. I don't care if you're going 60. I'll, I'll just turn on the jets. For the Portland Trailblazers, we're upgrading Cam Reddish. Cam Reddish, it's nice to see him get a shot in Portland, and he's been doing pretty well, so that's good. And for the Warriors, Steph Curry, kind of self-explanatory. He shoots threes, he makes a lot of them, and that's pretty cool. I mean, he can make those things from half court. I did see he was trying to shoot a tunnel shot and hit a fan in the head. So, Or not a fan, I think it was like one of the ball boys or something. So, yeah, that, that sucks, but... Um you know, uh, Steph Curry. For the Wizards, Kyle Kuzma, he gets a lot of buckets ever since leaving the Lakers. He was good on the Lakers too, but he's got a bigger role. He gets a lot of buckets. So yeah, we're going to upgrade him. Here's some of the players, just a quick little run through. And now we'll jump into the all-star teams where I was very proud of my work. As you can see, all of our players were here on the list. Luka Doncic didn't even make it. We broke Luka. We broke the game. Luka's not even here. How did we do it? I don't know. And Hemi Butler is the MVP of the league. Ben Matherin is the rookie of the year. Luca, you're a sixth man. Yeah, you're getting backed up by, or you're a backup for Frank Nilakina. Frank Nilakina's out there guarding the other team's best player, clamping them, and also getting buckets. He's doing it on both ends of the floor. All right. <laughs> okay. Okay. Let me chill out on my Frank Nilakina rant, but I didn't even explain why I picked Frank Nilakina. It's because he plays defense, and I saw Click Productions talk about him in his videos, and it made me like him more. So, yeah. I know a lot of y'all who probably watch my videos have seen click productions my league videos and yeah I, I watch his videos too but also if you're enjoying this video so far i know we're pretty far into it so seems like a nice time to beg for subscribers so if you're not subscribed we're trying to hit 10,000. thank y'all so much for 7,000. by the way we're just trying to keep it pushing thank y'all for all the support and now let's go ahead and let's get into this playoff run y'all can see some of the stats of guys who were in this video 
throughout uh, while I was ranting about whatever. And now we'll go ahead and look at some of the standings. As you can see, this kind of even out the league. There were a lot of teams in that middle of the pack, which is kind of true in real life in the Western Conference. It's really tightly packed, a lot of competition. So I guess it's, it's pretty accurate, even with these 99 overalls entering the league. The Denver Nuggets were the number one seed, just like they were in real life after they added Ish Smith. And Frank Nilakina is the starting point guard for the Mavs, and he leads them to the number two seed. And the Warriors, even though Steph only goes up a couple overalls, they still ended up making the fifth seed. The Atlanta Hawks, the new rigged 2K team, ever since they got Quinn Snyder. I don't know if you've seen any of the videos recently, but man, they've been going crazy. The Boston Celtics, of course, if you make another player good on their team. I mean, Mal Malcolm Brogdon was already good, but you get what I'm saying. You make him even better, of course they're going to be good. They're the Boston Celtics. And also, I, I kind of let it rock, but the Celtics, or not the Celtics, the Sixers didn't have the IQ to sign Mac McClung to a rest of the season deal. He was just on a two-way deal. Deal. He did not see the NBA floor the entire season, despite being a 99 overall with every Hall of Fame badge and going off in the G League, averaging over 21 rebounds per game at six foot two. So yeah, that's kind of on y'all Sixers. I'm not. I'm not even gonna blame myself for that. Y'all should have signed him. I don't know what's up with 2K and why a team wouldn't sign a guy like that. But uh, you know, it's 2K. A lot of things that happen in this game do not make much sense. So the Western Conference playoffs is uh, at least the first round is wrapped up pretty quickly. But the East is very, very competitive. Not one series is over after five games. And in a game seven between the Knicks and the Celtics, it goes down to the wire. Ultimately, the Celtics take it. Unfortunately, yes, I'm rooting against you. Sorry, Celtics fans, but y'all win too much. Derrick Rose, 34, 15, and 15. A very valiant effort for his team. Ultimately, just wasn't enough in this game seven, which really sucks. Malcolm Brogdon did drop 30 points, though. So that, that's a dub. Congrats to Celtics fans, I guess. And in this Bucks versus Nets game seven, the Nets win. Cam Thomas triple double, and look at his rebounding numbers. They're absolutely ridiculous for a six foot three guard, or really for anybody. But he's six three, grabbing all those boards. Still more game seven action ahead, though. We've got the Heat and the Pacers, and this one goes down to the wire. So we're gonna jump into this one and see how this finish goes. And the Pacers actually have the ball, making this a perfect setup for the clutch in this game. Tyrese Halliburton has the ball, and I, I don't know what type of plays 2K runs, but ultimately he does finally get a screen up top. Miles Turner pops. It's a wide open three. Great look for him, and he misses. Come on, Miles Turner. You're a three-point shooting big man, and that was a great look, and that's pretty much it for the Indiana Pacers. That was a really really bad ending, man. If you're the Indiana Pacers, you get a great look from Miles Turner. Ultimately, the shot doesn't drop, and that's how you lose in Game 7. Man, that's tough. And the Atlanta Hawks in Game 7 against the Orlando Magic are able to make it happen. I mean, of course, they're, they're the new 2K team. I've been talking about it. John Collins went off in the first round, though. Look at the efficiency. Absolutely ridiculous. Whoo! Oh my goodness, that voice crack was crazy, bro. Oh my goodness, bro. When do you outgrow voice cracks, man? I'm way too old to be voice cracking like this. This is wild. We've got the Timberwolves versus the Denver Nuggets, though, here in round number two. And then we've got the Dallas Mavericks. Let Bro, bro, are you serious? Did y'all hear that? We got the Dallas Mavericks versus the New Orleans Pelicans here in round two. And that's Frank Nilakina versus Jose Alvarado. And then the Nets versus the Hawks. We got Cam Thomas versus John Collins here. And then, oh my goodness, bro, the voice cracks. Then we've got the Heat versus the Boston Celtics. The Celtics, they have Malcolm Brogdon. And the Heat have Hemi Butler, 99 overall. Let's go ahead and let's see how these series go. The Celtics are already off to a early 2-0 lead. Unfortunately, I would like to see the Heat make a run over the Celtics, but I guess that's not going to happen. Maybe the Heat will fight back. Ultimately, the Nuggets get out of their series in a sweep. And then the Dallas Mavericks end up going to a Game 7 with the New Orleans Pelicans. In that Game 7, the Pelicans win. It's a 109-103 win. Jose Alvarado gets a triple-double. Frank Nilakina can't even crack double-figure scoring, but overall a solid playoff run for him. And ultimately, the Pelicans are going to move on to the Conference Finals. Jose Alvarado, he has a nice triple-double average going. He needs a little bit more scoring maybe, but I mean, they're winning, so it's working. And then the Atlanta Hawks, of course. 
course, are able to win in this one, a Game 7, and John Collins comes up big for them. He's been putting together a great playoff run for Atlanta. Just look at the efficiency that he's been working with throughout these playoffs. Cam Thomas, he's been putting up numbers as well for the Brooklyn Nets, but ultimately wasn't enough as they lose in 7. Now we've got a Celtics-Hawks series. Honestly, I wouldn't be surprised to see the Hawks take this one because they're just that team in 2K now. And then you've got the Pelicans versus the Nuggets. I would love to see Ish Smith and the Nuggets make a finals run. I mean, the Pelicans would be cool too, I guess, but Ish Smith in the finals, I would like to see that personally. Let's go ahead and let's get into these series though, where the Atlanta Hawks Got off to a good start in their series, but the Celtics are going to go ahead and win 4-2. to two. And the Denver Nuggets do the same, advancing to the NBA Finals. Led by Western Conference MVP Ish Smith, Jason Tatum leads the Celtics as the Eastern Conference MVP. And early on in this series, the Denver Nuggets were dominating. They were up 3-0. to zero. But of course, the Boston Celtics, oh man, they got to take a couple games. And all of a sudden, we're in a game seven. But kind of a W for the content because we've got a close one here. Ish Smith drops it down to Jokic. Jokic had a wide open layup. He Simmons did though. Kicked it out to Aaron Gordon who hits the three. Like, look at this. Look at this, bro. I mean, great shot by Aaron Gordon. All credit to him. But look at how wide open Nicole. Holy Jokic was under the basket. You still had time left. I'm surprised he didn't take that. But this is like the one time 2K's AI being really dumb ends up actually paying off as Jokic kicks it out to Aaron Gordon, who doesn't really have the best look, but ultimately it ends up dropping through. And the Nuggets now are in a tie game and have a chance to win it and not blow this 3-0 lead because blowing a 3-0 lead would be crazy. But the Celtics, it's not over for them yet. They could get a bucket here. Jason Tatum gets to the rim and kind of gets an awkward look that doesn't end up going. And in overtime, the game is still close. So W script, NBA. Can the Nuggets close this out? Their track record of being clutch in this series is horrible as they're somehow in a game seven when they're up three when they were up 3-0, but Jokic is able to draw a foul and he converts on both free throws. So that's big for the Nuggets. Can the Celtics answer here though? They still got a chance for sure, and Jason Tatum has the ball once again. Maybe you should swing it over to 99 overall Malcolm Brogdon. Ultimately, he doesn't do that though, and bricks the potential game tying shot. The Denver Nuggets win the championship just barely, barely not blowing that 3-0 lead. And Ish Smith is your finals MVP. Check out what he did in this game seven. Only 10 points, 5 for 17. We'll ignore that though because he had 20 assists in this one. Absolutely ridiculous from Ish Smith. And Thomas Bryant had 25 points. Jamal Murray had 26 and Jokic had 38. The Nuggets are champions. Ish Smith finals MVP. Hope y'all enjoyed the video. I had a lot of fun making it for y'all. Have a great day. Be sure to like and subscribe.